Hello, it's Matt, and I thought I would tell you a little bit about Last Legend Blades in this sword vlog, log vlog that I am doing now. So if you don't know what Last Legend Blades are, that's either because you forgot about them because they've been gone a while now, or you've started buying or being interested in swords or katana or production katana sword type objects after they left the market. And Last Legend is a producer of swords, if that much isn't obvious, and I was Spark to make this video based on some of the questions I've had when I tell people I have Last Legend swords or I've used them before or asked for their thoughts on them uh, and they don't know what they are or people ask me what they are when they spot them on eBay or something like that. And I picked up this Last Legend Yoshima uh, on SFI not too long ago and I thought I would make a video about Last Legend and answer the question, what the hell is Last Legend? What I recall about Last Legend that was a little different and why people still kind of like them and are interested in them is they used to make swords with different geometries than what you find, well really than what you can still find today. Not that you can't find something similar to what they made, but it's a little bit more difficult now that they've exited the market. They used to make swords with more pronounced sories and a little bit of a different shape. It seems like half an inch or three quarters of an inch for sori, which is the, the curvature of the blade, is about the, the kind of templated standard for everything now. And you don't see much differentiation in terms of that curvature anymore. And Last Legend had some that were uh, around an inch of a, a sorry or maybe a little larger, which doesn't sound like that much, but it really makes a big difference. Even that extra quarter of an inch really changes the dynamic and the curvature of the sword uh, pretty substantially. The other thing that I would say is different about Last Legend, which isn't gonna be crazy anymore. If you've seen eBay vendors, you kind of pick the type of sword you want and get to pick all the options. Uh, Last Legend was similar to that. You pick the geometry of the sword that you liked, and they had five main series. As I recall, the Kiramaru, the Tektoshi, the Amiru, the uh, Mukasa, Mikusa, and the Yashima, which I have here. Hopefully, I said those right. The thing was that you picked one of those five main series, and then you could pick the type of steel the blade was made from. Not exactly the type of steel, but the tempering. So uh, through hardened or differentially hardened or differentially hardened and folded or differentially hardened and folded a lot more. And then you could pick if it had a bohi or not a bohi and how long the blade was within, I think they give you a couple options for size. Uh, I think there might've been options for the suka length as well. And then you could pick some options for the fittings and whatnot as well. So different Tsuba, Fuchi, Kashura, you could pick from kind of a, a design that they had laid out or, or make your own. There were also some options in the Saya with different colors, like, well, different colors is pretty straightforward, but they had like rattan wraps and Samegao wraps, stuff that you're not, you've seen before in production swords from eBay vendors and Longquan or Longchuan ven vendors and stuff. It's not, not crazy, nothing that you haven't seen before. They also, though, did have uh, something they said that was like a cryogenically heat treated or a cryo heat treatment that made the blade stronger. That may have been a gimmick. I'm not really 100% sure. Uh, they also had a lifetime warranty on many of their products, and that doesn't do a whole lot of good anymore because the company has folded. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the lifetime warranty well, it's not necessarily valid. I can say that they probably put it on there because the swords were generally pretty durable. That might be one thing that uh, would be a criticism more than anything else, and that's the swords more or less feel stout in your hand, and they have a lot of presence. Sometimes people really like that, but they, they always felt a little heavy. Uh, not so unwieldy or crappy, but they were always uh, pretty substantial in your hand, and would drift toward the more substantial feeling than the lively feeling, if, if I could kind of combine my experience from having multiple different Last Legend Blades. In terms of what I've had, I'm doing my video editing properly, you will see some photos of the swords from Last Legend that I've had other than this Yoshima. But they were all kind of big feeling. Even the Makusa, which was supposed to be their lighter one, uh, still felt uh, pretty sizable in the hand when I compare it to say Hanwei Shinto. Now there were other series from those five. They had uh, a bear and a dragon or the Shinryu or the Shinkuma respectively and those you could identify they had some bear or dragon carvings in the Saya which were pretty lackluster I mean they, they look kind of raw, rough around the edges but still you don't see Saya carving a lot anymore and that's probably because it's hard and tough to tough to get your your payback on that they also had some competition cutters that ranged in shapes and sizes and 
I mean, the, that was, they also probably made some custom stuff. I, I'm, I'm really limiting a lot of the things they did. The main thing, though, was you pick from one of these five, pick the blade, size, type, bohe, not bohe, colors, and then they got you a sword. Uh, they haven't been around for, for some time, but the blades still kind of have like a cult following almost. There's some people that really like Last Legend swords, and when they pop up on eBay, they don't usually last terribly long unless somebody's asking, like, the price the blade originally sold for. And even then, sometimes they sell. This one is maybe a testament to how well they hold up. It's been through hell, and it's still in reasonable shape. Uh, there's a ding near the uh, near the Kasaki, a little bit of an edge roll, but it's still sharp. And the Suba is, is kind of wiggly a little bit, as, as is the Habaki. Um, this was something that I noticed. Last Legend wasn't perfect or infallible. It's not like they had the recipe and just kind of fell off the face of the earth. I would commonly see spaces between the Suba, Fuchikashira, Habaki, Seppa, you know, this area would, would commonly have some stuff. I've had some with loose Ito, though this one looks like it has the original Ito on it, and it's still very tight, so it could, it could be hit or miss there. Uh, they had rattling and things like that. They also commonly had three Makugi. Now, historically, one was common, uh, two is not so uncommon today and Last Legends put three in the in the handle very commonly. And as a side note, when you put multiple Makugi in, I'm told that it makes it more difficult for the Nakago or the Tang to sit properly in the Suka or the handle. So it it's not surprising that many of the Last Legend blades that I've had would kind of had a little bit of rattle or, or it was difficult to, to get them fit properly. But they had an interesting shape and they had, you know, kind of the same type of finishing issues so there'd be some wiggles and wobbles around uh, a lot of times the polish was not necessarily great on these even in the folded ones that I've had you would be able to make out the hada but you couldn't necessarily make out the hamon or the temper line very well it was always kind of subtle and you had to hold it up to the right light to see it this one for example is a uh, differentially hardened blade and it's really probably very difficult for you to see uh, the hamon in it I don't know if it's even going to pick it up, maybe barely, but that, that, that was something that was very common in Last Legend Blades. They all kind of have like a through hardened look, and the polish was never really mirror-like either. It was always kind of a subtle satin type look. Still, they are popular. People like Last Legend Swords. They sell pretty easily, and they're, um, they're fun to play with just because the shapes aren't represented in a lot of the production katana that you see today, other than if you order one or happen to find a specialty iteration made by somebody on eBay or something like that. That's really all I have for you for Last Legends. They're, they're fun and now maybe you know a little bit more. Hopefully the information that I have is accurate. If you have something better or know more about the company or what the heck happened, throw it down below. I'd, I'd certainly like to know it as well. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and have a good one.